Good morning, everybody, and happy Watershed Wednesday. I'm Evan with Minnesota Trout Unlimited, and behind me, I have two awesome people uh, who work with the St. Croix River Association. I will let them introduce themselves. I'm Nicole. I'm from the St. Croix River Association. I am the outdoor educator. Everybody, uh, I'm Jeremiah with the St. Croix River Association, and uh, I'm the naturalist. So as you can see, we are at the Marine Village Landing on the majestic St. Croix River. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a tributary stream flowing in here, as well as the history of the area, and even a little bit of uh, the ecosystem. Stay tuned! Take a look at this super cool waterfall behind me. This site is so important for Minnesota because it was the first commercial sawmill in the state back in the 1800s. All thanks to this awesome waterfall that powered the mill. Alright, I got a challenge for you guys today. While you're watching our videos, see if you can find any pine trees in the background, like a big pine tree. I bet you won't find one because all of those pine trees were cut down back in the 1800s when this, log, when this logging mill was here. Where's all the pine trees? Alright, so if you can imagine this area way back in the day, the 18th it would have been super industrialized, there would have been log jams and steamboats going up and down the river, and it was just jam-packed with lots of people and things going on. It was a great route for immigration to make its way to Minnesota. It was a very important part of the river, but today you can see the water is flowing freely, the ice can move down the river, all thanks to the National Park Service and the protections that got put in place in the late 1960s with the Wild and Scenic River. All right, guys, here we are in the Marine Mill ruins. Here next to me is a stone that supported a 50 horsepower steam engine. And all around me here, you can see the foundation of the building with limestone blocks that were pulled from the bluffs here locally. So that's how most of the buildings were built around here. This mill is how we got the town of Marine on St. Croix. In fact, it was named because of two men that came from Marine, Illinois. And they landed here as they came up the river. They saw it was a great spot, and now this town is here from it, just like all the other towns up and down the river that came from sawmills and from travelers coming up and down the river. So while we're going to wait for the weather to warm up so we can get in the stream, we're going to look outside the stream and see what we can find for signs of life. So let's look at the beach. Let's look around and see what we can find. So as we are walking along this little beach next to the St. Croix, uh, we're looking in the mud, and here... I'll try to circle it. You can see a little deer track. Uh, it's only one, but you know this is a pretty urban area that we're in, so it's good to see that you know animals are able to do their things still in this environment. So as we were walking along, Nicole spotted this what well, looks like an oil slick to me, but she mentions it's a bacteria. It's actually a bacterial film that looks almost just like that rainbow iridescent you know color that we see when oil is on top of water, but. To tell the difference, you just kind of stick your finger in it, play, with it, play around with it, and if it breaks up and doesn't go back together, then it's going to be that bacteria. If it goes back together, then it's likely going to be oil. But yeah, good eye, Nicole. Some more cool finds from this beach. Uh, not really signs of life, uh, signs of my life, because I like finding them. Agates. Uh, this little guy was just laying on the ground. Uh, I could see the sun shining through it with the, the red color. But yeah, really cool find. 1.2 billion year old rock. My Nicole. It looks like I'm picking up poop, but I promise it's not. This is an owl pellet. So you can actually see there's a little bit of bone right in there. And just a couple fragments, fur, you know, so this was probably maybe a squirrel or something that the owl got to chew on, but we'll leave it there. Somebody else can dissect it and uh, play around with it. Pretty cool. So another quick little sign of life. So we see this goldenrod plant and then this, what looks like a ball. It's actually called a gall. And actually on this side, you can see there's a hole drilled into it, probably from a chickadee or something, pecking in to get the insect that created the gall out. So as you can see under the ice, I'm touching ice right now, we got some beetles just swimming around. This one looks like he's just crawling around. Really cool. We'll probably get more into beetles and the bugs under the water when we get in the water, but it's cool to be able to see it right under the ice. So this stream right here is, believe it or not, a brook trout designated stream. Uh, we were walking up the trail looking in a pool and we just saw some 
spook and swim away. I wish I had an underwater camera for you. We'd try to get some, but uh, maybe another day. Uh, the St. Croix Valley used to have a whole bunch of trout streams along it. Uh, there are still quite a few. Uh, what happened during the logging days, though, is once they clear-cut the forests, a lot of erosion got into these small streams. And brook trout need really rocky bottoms in order to make their reds, lay their eggs, um, grow their food, the macroinvertebrates, uh, and over time those things got filled in. Uh, thankfully there are still quite a few brook trout streams along the watershed here. Um, and this is one of the first times I've ever been here. And it's really cool to see these native fish that have always been in this watershed still thriving in this small short little stream. As you can see, it is definitely cold, uh, but this creek does not have any ice in it. That's another reason why trout can survive in here is because it is spring fed. And this water, no matter how hot or cold it is, is always right around 50 or 60 degrees. It actually feels like a sauna on my feet right now. It's awesome. Uh, but it, juxtaposed from our cool little brook trout spring fed creek, over to the main river, which is a lot warmer water, this time of year, eventually all that river is going to ice over completely. Uh, so it's a, a nice visual for you guys to see how spring water actually helps our trout survive in our northern climate. All right, let's take a look at let's, what we found. Let's see. It's living in this little trout stream. <laughs> Oh man, we'll dig through some of the debris here. Oh, it is a good one. Whoa, look at that. That is a nice crane fly oh, larva. You thought that one was nice. Whoa. Look at this one. Oh, <laughs> chunkers. Look at those. Awesome. You can see their uh, tentacles on the front of their face. It is a defining characteristic. Let's see what else we got here. Why? More! Look at all these crane Some flies. Grubs. Even though they look gross, they tell us the water quality is really high. Uh, we got some scuds, freshwater shrimp. Yummy! Look at this thing! Whoa! This is the apex predator of water bugs, the dragonfly larva. He's a little cold right now, so he's not moving much. We'll put him in the water. Very awesome find. Really good water quality indicator. Yes! So cool. <laughs> so here's a look at the big crane fly larvas. Those are the ones doing the shimmy right now. In the middle we got our dragonfly larva. Pretty cool. We've got a couple little scuds. That one's just sitting there. Um, got some swimming around in the corner. But really sneaky guy. Hey little guy, looks like a piece of bark. Uh, that is actually a case caddis. You can see his head just popping out, squirming around. Very cool. All these bugs indicate a good level of water quality, which is why our brook trout are in here. I think the next thing we're going to go do is bust some ice in the St. Croix and see what's living under the ice right now. Here we are in the main St. Croix River, uh, right next to the creek mouth. We are going to try, first time ever in the history of macro hunting, uh, we are going to sample under some ice. Uh, so Nicole and I are going to bust out these icebergs right here. <laughs> okay. We're going to see what macros are doing under the ice, or even if there are any, because this is the first time ever this has been done. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay. Here we go. Get the ice out of the way. Catch it. <laughs> It's going to be a macro slushy, everyone. <laughs> Good job. Really sandy, gravelly bottom. Good habitat. Okay, we'll lift it up. See what we got. We got ice. Whoa! <laughs> Lots of ice, but under the ice, everyone. That is where the magic happens. Scoop this out of the way. So here, as you can see, under the ice, Right off of my fingertip is a baby, baby scud. There's still life down there. We're going to do it again, see if we can find some more. There's life under the ice. <laughs> if you dare, put your hands in the water. Yeah. 
Oh, he's coming oh, down there now. There he is. He's just starting to peek out again. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Nicole did a polar plunge for that Worth guy. It. <laughs> awesome cased caddis. So we resorted to just picking up rocks with our frozen hands. Uh, and we're finding some very small mayfly species on here. Also, really well camouflaged are two uh, caddis cases completely made out of little pebbles. Sweet. Very cool. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed uh, this sweet partnership video of Watershed Wednesday. Tune in next week. We're going to do it again. Until then, play outside, enjoy the nice weather, and we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>